Good How about evening. Now with the noise <laughs> good evening, boys and girls. <laughs> You're good, MK. Uh, welcome to another live edition of the Highbury Squad. It's Hump Day tonight. We're doing something a little bit different. I think we've all had enough talk of the uh, Everton game. So here we go. It's the bench. <laughs> Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another live edition of the Highbury Squad. If you're watching the Champions League, uh, I hope you're enjoying it. And if uh, that means you're watching on replay, a uh, welcome to the show. This image was actually done for us by our guest today, MK Liebman from Arsenal Los Angeles, when Pepe was in his pomp at the Arsenal. And it spawned a conversation between she and I on WhatsApp about our bench players. So here we go. Welcome back to the show, my podcast brother from another mother, Mr. Super Kev, Super Kevin Campbell. What is <laughs> welcome and let's say that's it, MK. That's it. <laughs> that's right. At ease, everybody. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Good stuff, you guys. Good evening to all the usual suspects in the house. Um, let us know how we sound. I'm sure we sound good. Listen to this guy. MK will knock some sense into Kev. Taib, listen to this. <gasps> that's a yellow Super card. Oh, my God. That's a yellow card. That's a Where's, card. Where, that is, should I give him a warning, guys, Kev, or should I give him a card? It's give a straight him cards. Yellow. Don't warn him. Yeah. Give him cards. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a caution. Don't mess around. Give them cards. Him and Su Newman. Super deluded Kev gets a that gets a yellow card. Now you're trying to make it up by, you know, MK's a legend. We I'm all not, know that. I've never played for Arsenal Football Club. I you might have <laughs> similar opinions, but like I'm just a person in California. Let's Newman please at least respect also, the fact that Kev played for this team and and is an actual Arsenal legend. Here for me. We, we are free to disagree, but we still have to be respectful. Here is a yellow card for Newman. Also, that's how it works. Good. Two, and good. two yellow cards right Do some off art the about back. that one, Newman. <laughs> <laughs> about yet another Kim, yellow. I was, so, I was so excited to hand out those yellow cards. My pencil fell out. Honestly, right <laughs> off the bat. It's spicy already. It's spicy already. And then he goes, sorry, Campbell. Sorry, Campbell. <laughs> oh, Taib. Do you want a red? <laughs> Now's the talking to. Now's the talking to. So okay. Okay. Now you referee. Give him a talk Here we to. go. This is where I'm going to be like this. <laughs> sorry, Campbell. You are so lucky, Kev said to me to just give you a talking to. That is crazy. Absolutely crazy. You guys, insane. Future Shocks pencil also. And then Newman's sucking up now. I love you, Super Kev. I no, mean, you no know. No kissing ass now, Newman. You can go and do one. <laughs> Forget all that. I know where you're, I know where you're <sighs> bread buttered, mate. Universal Greek has recovered from COVID. He's back. What did you miss? Well oh my gosh. Well done, Universal Greek. Well done. And you glad missed them. Right. Yeah, glad you're all right. Next yeah. Wednesday, if you're available, Universal Greek, we'd love you on the show with Rich to do a trip down memory lane. So hit me up on the old thehybrid squad at gmail.com. We hope you're feeling better. Ryan, Kev, they're all coming at you. Kev's Come attorney. At Look at this. I don't mind that. <laughs> I don't mind that at all. Listen, the attorney and all that. I, I don't this. mind That's all bad. that. Arteta's lawyer is back. That's fine. But being rude, no. Yeah, no I rude. I don't accept that. No. no. There's a lot. No, no, nobody does. I'd like to say that... Um, exactly. Taib now asking questions of himself. What the F is wrong with me? <laughs> Just can't help himself, can he? Just can't. He's so kicking good. himself, I see. 
<laughs> Matt E.K. calling them flip-flops. I'd like to do a couple of housekeeping issues before we get stuck into this subject that I love that MK kind of brought to me and stuff like that, Super Kev. So yesterday, I actually met a squaddy in Huntington Beach, California. Can you believe it? From all corners of the earth, this is what I love about our show, I uh, hooked up with Matt E.K. Well, hold on one second. I met with Matt E.K. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what's going on here? Do you tell? Uh, we had, he bought me the beer he promised, an absolute gentleman. And let me tell you, our listeners are so epic. It was wonderful. It was um, nourishing. Uh, my soul was fulfilled. And thank you so much. Uh, yes, I did rephrase that. Thanks, uh, Future Shot. Very quick. Uh, yeah, yeah, very quick, very quick. But it was absolutely awesome. We had a great time. It was a beautiful day. And thank you so much. I know, I mean, gross, whatever. I miss. I misspoke. It happens a lot. Um, thank you, Matty K. It was awesome. If you're ever in this, in this part of the world, I would always love to meet up with you. All right? Um, 100%. No matter where you are or where you come from, just hit me up. And top man, I always, top man, yeah, K, top, top man. man. Yeah, we talked about you, Kev. Were your ears burning? No. no. <laughs> too, too, too far away and too cold. <laughs> too far away and too cold. All right. Also, our good friends at Football Prizes, Super Kevin MK. When the when it's when it's a bit dark, this always helps, doesn't it? A little bit of Dennis. Come on the now. Mighty, the mighty Dutchman. The mighty oh, Dutchman. absolute Super. beauty. It's online right now. Grab your ticket. I'm going to be giving a free one away tomorrow night on the Tactical Squad, which we'll tell you about a little bit later on. So be sure to go to footballprizes.co.uk to get your Dennis Burkamp juice. Right. We are going to march on with the show tonight. Um, MK is busily typing on her keyboard right now. Yeah, I think my headphones are dying. So I'm going to switch to my over-ear headphones. Okay, yeah, because there's a little... Typing. Okay, yeah. there you go. MK is switching switch over. over. We got a bit of an echo, but here we go. No, not an echo. You plugged in? Coming through. Yeah. There we go. Better? That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, Kev, MK and I have been talking over WhatsApp for a few months, and I kind of called myself out a little while ago because she wanted to do a show about Martinelli and being on the bench and kind of looking at him as a player. We already did a player profile, but her approach was a little bit different. And then all of a sudden, Martinelli gets a shot in the team. But I thought the conversation, Kev, about um, the bench players uh, was really super interesting. And, of course, with you being a player, it's always kind of – fascinating to know what happens in training every day which affects who starts and who sits and it brought up the conversation especially after the Everton game of Eddie coming on and also Eddie coming on in the previous game versus some other players so just wanted to kind of talk to everyone about that and us kind of have a huddle and a conversation I think the most fascinating conversation of all is about Pepe and, and what's happening with him. So, MK, I was going to throw it over to you to see where you wanted to start and what you wanted to throw at uh, Super Kev here with this uh, with this subject. Right. So um, I think I'll start actually with the Arteta press conference. I think it's a good, good starting off point and just take it from the manager's mouth himself. So um, I don't have the outlet that asked him this question, but after the Everton match, they asked him why he didn't bring on Pepe, to which Arteta said, because I decided to play Eddie today to bring him on. He created three chances and hit the post once in 25 minutes, I think. Not satisfied with that answer, they pushed more on why he chose Nketiah, to which Arteta said, he does every day in training what you see him do here, every single day. That's why I picked him. So what is going on that we can't maybe really see, which is what's going on in the training pitch and is that maybe where the hangup is? Is it perhaps something with Pepe's attitude? Like here we have two players, right? That their Arsenal career is probably in doubt, right? And Ketia running down his contract and obviously Pepe being out of form. So Kev, my question to you is, you know, what are these managers looking for in the training pitch? What do you think might be going on? And, and how do you, might you unpack Arteta's answers there? Uh, look, whether people believe it or not, how you train and your attitude is so important 
in and around the team. Because a manager's job isn't just the first 11. The first 11 who he picks looked after themselves, especially if they're winning. But then the next key is the substitutes. Back in my day, there was only two substitutes. So you really mm, had to impress. It's crazy. You know, you've got a whole squad of players and you really had to impress to be on the bench. Now you've got a raft of guys who obviously get picked to be on the bench. But the manager's going to go with the ones whose attitude is right. I mean, how could you be picking somebody? You, I don't know what business you do, MK, or e even for yourself, um, Solf. But if, if you're doing what you're doing and somebody's really being helpful, somebody's putting the work in, and then there's another one sulking, who are you going to lean towards? It's human nature. You're going to lean towards the one who puts the work in, who gives you the least amount of problems and who doesn't sulk. Mm. That's what you're going to do. And that's, uh, I believe that is what Mikel Arteta's done, and that's why he's chosen Eddie Nketiah to come on, because his attitude is right. Pepe's attitude can't be right, or else he would be coming on. Go on, MK, if you wanted to jump in with a follow-up there, I, just, I, I, ha I did, on. actually, real yeah, quick. So absolutely. You're my co- I, you're, you're a triple co-host tonight. <laughs> I think that's absolutely a part of it, but I also think there's some inconsistency there too, right? Because players have often said prior to Martinelli starting these last two matches that Martinelli was the most talented player on that pitch. And Arteta wasn't really in a rush to give him minutes or game time. So, and so I, it, if players are saying that about Martinelli, it clearly stands to reason that he probably has good work ethic. And Obama Yang also is getting chances despite putting in shockers and liking Cristiano Ronaldo's Instagram posts. So I, I think while I want to believe that, I, I'm also kind of at a loss for the consistency as well and, and wondering well, maybe what other factors. Well, well, MK, the consistency is this. When the team are winning, it's very difficult to change it. Very difficult to change it. And that's why Martinelli, we've discussed this pre previously, and I'm sure you've, you've seen it. He, he has to wait his turn. And when he gets his opportunity, he has to take it. I get his attitude is great. And he's got, we know he's got an abundance of talent. But when the team are, are winning, you have to wait your time. And when your time comes, boy, do you have to take it. Because if you don't take it, being a good trainer, just being a good trainer isn't enough. Mm. But he has, he proved it. He, he came on and he took his chance. And that's, that's testimony to him. He came on and he took his chance brilliantly. So fantastic impact. Started the next game. There you go. That's what the good attitude gets you. But if, you're, <laughs> if your attitude isn't right... The manager's not going to, he's not going to pick you. And I think we all agree that just because your price tag might be the most expensive in Arsenal football club history doesn't mean that you'll work out or that you start. I wanted to put Amira's comment up here for both of you because I think it's interesting because I do believe a lot of us find Pepe conflicting. He doesn't look like he, he gives 100% most of the time. It's frustrating. But yet we've all kind of, talked about it on this show Kev especially with he's he may his stats look better than what we see on the pitch he may not be good for like 60 minutes but he'll be the one that can you know put a pass in or he'll help with an assist or grab a goal in that run up to the FA Cup he was it was lacquer over and and Pepe mm -hmm. and I also I'm going to read out a whole bunch of folks in chat say he's been given so many chances. But what I wanted to circle back with Kev here is, Kev, you always talk about having to start your best players. How tough is it for the club and for Arteta that he is the most expensive signing in Arsenal football club history, but yet maybe he isn't one of the best players? But it's it's he's like... talented. Mm. But that's one thing nobody could argue. We can't argue that how talented he is. He is extremely talented. Our problem has been consistency. Now, when we when Arteta actually changed it a bit and went Saka right and Smith Rowe left, we looked a lot more solid. We looked a lot more 
solid defensively and we were winning games. That is the death knell for Pepe. Because he has had opportunities. He has been involved in a lot of goal actions, Sophie. But we haven't been consistent as a team. All of a sudden, we're starting to find a little bit of consistency as an 11, as a first 11. And, you know, it's for us, it's, will the manager change it? Well, we wouldn't complain if he kept it the way it was. So that's, what you, that's where you get continuity. You get people being comfortable in their positions. You get Smith Rowe starting to play that position very good. And he starts to get goals, etc. We're starting to see the team start to evolve a little bit. That's a death knell for Pepe. Because one thing he is, MK and Sophie, mm -hmm. he is inconsistent. He can be brilliant and he could be awful all in the same half. Can't, can't run, you can't progress a team on inconsistent players. You can't. And we were hoping, Sophie, we were hoping this season we would see him. We really were. Progress and be more consistent. He was in we your were... starting 11 when we discussed that not long ago, Kev. I think yes. he was in yours. Yeah. Yeah. He mm -hmm. was the player, MK, that we both chose that we wanted to shine this season and be like yes. the the guy, right? Because breakout, he's, breakout season. He yeah. he's shown glimpses of it. So let me let me ask you guys uh, this way: Do you think? And I'll start with you, MK, because you kind of been looking at this and mm. totally respect what Kev's saying because. He has been inconsistent, yet he's one of those really weird players where his stats kind of speak better than what we see on the pitch. Do you think it's it's hindered him when he's played well and he's benched? Like Arteta has that in him a little bit. A player plays well and then he's benched. And obviously, if you're a player who's played well, that can create conflict between you and the manager. Every player mm -hmm. wants to play. Kev will tell you that. You want to start every week, but it, it might not be possible for some players. Do you think he's been he's been given a fair shot, even though he's also been given a lot of chances? May sound like a weird question, but I also no, I, think... Mm -hmm. Go on, mate. Yeah, I, I think that what we're not talking about here is how Martinelli has kind of displaced Pepe, right? Like, I think Martinelli is further up that pecking order right now um, than even Pepe is. It's also important to note that Martinelli seems to have a fitness injury. He, uh, Arteta also noted that he may have a hamstring and, and he's concerned about it. So, um, but we can mention that later. Um, I think Pepe, his first touches can sometimes strike me as really poor. And if you're going to be, you know, pressing up the pitch and, Mikel Arteta, for all of his criticism, he is a more conservative manager. And especially if you're playing possession football, if you're and and you know you're trying to remain in control of that game, if you have someone like Pepe that's turning the ball over, putting pressure on those central defensive midfielders, which has been our weakness, I would say right now more than any other position apart from striker. Um, you know, if you have someone turning the ball over at critical junctures, when you're bombing forward and attack, that's going to put tremendous pressure on you. It's going to lead to a goal. So if I'm Mikel Arteta and I'm seeing someone that's, that's maybe inconsistent or sloppy in possession, that's a huge red flag to me, no matter how much you might think Enketia isn't good enough. So I think that that is something to really look at because how, how often do you see the Twitter sphere? just erupt like, ah, oh, there he goes. He's turned it over again. And they just get so disgusted at him because Pepe is a stu as a flair player, which works really well in La Liga. It works really well in Syria and to some degree in, um, in Liga. But I think that in the Premier League, it's a lot harder to get away with that style of football and not, you know, have it cost your team. Sometimes. Kev, do, do you think he, do you think it is the case of not having enough time on the ball in the Premier League just because of the intensity and the way, you no. know, teams... No? No, because we've seen Pepe have some really good moments. We've seen him pick the ball up and we've seen him be devastating. We've seen that. So it can't be... It can't be that. I just think that, that maybe the problem is, you know, he's just that type of player. He is not mentally... because. The Premier League is mentally demanding just as much as it is physically. And 
Every week, you've got a fullback. He'll be playing against a fullback who's quick, strong, fit, and will kick him. Is he mentally strong enough to be able to take it week in, week out? And I don't think he is. I would love him to be because I think he's got Time incredible it. talent. He has. He's got incredible talent. Okay. He's high maintenance, but this is This is his third season. And you, yeah. nobody can tell me he hasn't had a fair crack of the whip. So, Kev, help me understand a little bit then of when Willian was awful, he kept getting picked. And we talked about that on this show. Like, at what point is he going to be experience. dropped? Experience. He's, he's getting picked on experience. Be and I'll I, I, I tell you this much. I'll tell you this much as well. Because when you have the experience, even if you're not playing well, you would do the things that the manager likes just because you have the experience. Whereas with Pepe, he won't do the things, he won't do the, 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 the tucking in and he won't do the probably the chasing and the harassing that somebody else would do. We know he can do it because he's a fit lad. But when That's you really don't do it, yeah, when you don't do it consistently, it's easy for the manager because they always look at the video after. Whether you win, lose, or draw, you check the video and you look at where the opposition got by you, you know, what, what was the shape like of the team, etc. And I don't think Pepe is consistent in that either, in positional sense either. So, you know, it's, it's, it might seem as though I'm, I'm, I'm having a go at Pepe, but I'm not. It's just mm -hmm. that, it's he's something he has to learn. Mm. And as a flair player, let me just get on to something you said, MK, about sure. flair players in Spain and, um, and France mm -hmm. and Italy and all that. that fl flair players work b best in England if they have the right work ethic. Well, that, that's what I was going to bounce off to is that if you're going to play like that, you have to go after it when you lose it. And it's a bit like Ozil when you would get pissed because he was also a flair player, right? And he had those wonderful little flicks. But when those flicks don't go to plan and you don't run back with the rest of your team, what kind of work ethic is that? And I guess that's, you know, what that manager is going to be looking at in upon review. And and maybe there is also a bit of that as a creative player, maybe, where Pepe is just kind of like content to do his own thing and maybe not listen to the manager on the sidelines. I don't know if that's true. That's just speculation because I don't know what the manager is saying on the sideline, but it could be a bit of that as well, you think? MK, if, if Pepe was getting 20 goals a season, being a flair player, care. we sure. wouldn't be having this conversation. No. <laughs> Although he does have quite a few assists. Yeah. And, and, and you know why? Because he's making a difference. He's really making a difference to the team. 20 goals and, and 10 assists or, or whatever. A bit like Fernandez at Manchester United, the way he's, he made a real difference for Manchester United. If he was doing that, then you could say, hey, listen, you guys get around. When he loses the ball, you know, the team could combat that. But unfortunately, he's just not quite there. Um, four doors here who put this up 10 times, but I'm going to put it in because it's interesting. What do you think about this, Kev and MK? Pepe's contributed the most goals. Uh, Saka, two goals in nine months. And you mid-table dwellers rave over him. Yeah. I think he sounds Everyone like thinks he he's a Spurs fan. For Sky. Yeah, he should audition for for Sky or, but, or talks. Yeah. <laughs> but this is the this is the, the it, this is this the conundrum, is the, isn't it? This is the Kev. conundrum. This is the conundrum because yeah. we know Pepe is talented. We know with that left foot, we know he can beat people. He can deliver. He can he, he can do it all, Sophie. That's not the question. The, our question is. Can he be consistent and can he be consistent in a winning team? And the answer is no, he can't. Soon as Smith, Rowe and Saka play, we all of a sudden went on a run. I know what he got, Steve. I know what he got last year, but last year's last year. We're talking about this season. Totally different last season. Kev, what do you what do you think of uh, a few people in in chat have said he's never really played with a prolific number nine? 
Do you think that's just another excuse enabling him? Because if you're at that value, Kev, and you come in, you've got to have an impact, right? We've seen big signings fail in the Premier League, and I don't think he's a failure. I just think, I honestly think if he was a £20 million signing, we would have said, eh, it hasn't worked out. But because he's our record signing, Mm -hmm. it just heightens everything. You expect. Uh And and the the signings before him. The big money signings, your Sanchez and Ozil, you know, really made a difference to the team. They really made a difference to the team. And again, I know Pepe has the talent. That's not that. That's not what we're we're questioning here. No, it's not. You know, we're not questioning his talent level at all. Can he play and be devastating? One hundred percent. Do we see it on a consistent basis, people? We I, we don't. But not only that, you've got to play as a team player too. You do have to. Yeah. And and MK, I think with every manager, character and culture DNA comes into it. I say this often to the point where squaddies are probably like annoyed with me for saying it, but it's very important. Kev will tell you, you can have all the talent in the world, but if you don't have the right attitude, it's never going to work. Right. So mm-hmm. there's there's definitely that sentiment of is Pepe and I would even go as far now to talk. We're not talking about Obama Yang, but character and Kev talked about it. Attitude in training. You did, too. And that approach. Um, there's so- a reason why Genduzi isn't here anymore. There's a reason why certain players aren't at the club anymore. Mm-hmm. So I think Pepe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I, I seem to recall that when he first came to the team, he obviously really flocked to Obama Yang and Lacazette as a francophone, you know, player. Um, I'm not certain how confident he is in his in English. Um, I'm not certain how confident he is and comfortable maybe he feels in England, right? Like you keep in mind, like it's a huge transition to like all of a sudden be in London from I know he he grew up in the Cote d'Ivoire, but um and also uh France, I think. But um it's it's a huge transition, and we see mm-hmm. what happened with Lucas Torreira and, and how difficult it was for him to adjust to England and what might be going through his head and, and then how, in turn, he interacts with other players that aren't Obama Yang and Lacazette. Because for a while, you saw on social media, that was sort of like the trio, right? We don't like see that were, anymore. And you don't see that anymore. So no. what's going on there, right? Again, this is all speculation, and I don't think that that's very helpful, but it does kind of... Um, seem a bit like evidentiary when you start thinking about like what is his attitude the fact that he's not hanging around with these players and where what's going on here where is he with his teammates because yes that's important in any sport it's important that leadership is absolutely essential and i think that's what we're missing from obama yang now too if you're wearing that captain armband and you don't even fight for that penalty against tomiyasu in the box against manchester united that you don't even go up and talk to the ref I mean, that's another thing. I'd, I'd be curious, uh, Kev, what you think of that. I mean, because... Oh, don't get me started that on that, MK. Don't get me started on that, MK. Yeah. Don't get me started on the Arsenal being soft. That and was, not, not that challenging never happened referee. in the day. Come on, you have to. You have to bark yeah. at the referee. Yes. You know, you have to bark at the referee. It's like, hey, you've got to go to him and you've got to say to him and you've got to let him know. And you've got to let him know. Even after, when the game's going on, you miss that one, ref. You know, you've got to stay at him because mm-hmm. yeah. you're, you're on enemy territory. Yeah, mm-hmm. and what is is that missing from some of these players, Pepe maybe included? Like, where is the fight from our from many of our players on the bench and off? Because I don't yeah. see it. Why? Well, we, have seen, and... we have seen some of it. We have seen a little bit of it earlier on where, you know, we did. whoever it was at, at, at Burnley... Uh, and stuff like Brighton. that. We saw a bit of fight. Yeah, Bright. We saw a bit of fight. We have seen a little bit of fight, but it's not. It's nowhere near where it needs to be if you're going to be up there challenging. That's for sure. Is it the manager then? Are they? Is it? Are they? I'm not saying like I don't want to get into Arteta in or out. I'm just asking: Is it? Is it a managerial? Is it a game ma- a match management thing? Is it? Wh- why is apathy settling into this club seemingly right now? I mean, that's a hard question to answer, but. Well, What's going what you got, on? Yeah, what you got to understand is that the, the team has to develop and grow. They have to grow their own identity. Remember, these players have only been together since the first transfer window. So, you know, they're, they're still learning each other's game. They're still together. But our, our team, although we play, 
we've, we've been able to pick an 11 quite regularly before. The team still isn't, isn't, it's, the team still isn't right. We still have holes in it. We just play 4-2-3-1 all the time and just try to force it to work. No, but we played 4-4-2 against Leicester. Right, that's true. And that's we've gone true. away from that a little you know, bit, we, haven't we, Kev? And, and, and maybe because of personnel or whatever. But I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, <clears throat> can we? Should we go back to it? Do, do we not? Obviously, that's something. If the players feel comfortable or whatever, I, I, I don't know what goes on at the training ground, so I can't talk about that. But one thing I do, one thing I do know is all of a sudden having that boisterous attitude comes from being winners and comes from winning football matches because you've always got something to lose. These boys are still learning that as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, they are. And that, and also we've got a young team. So maybe they're Kev, you were at the Everton game, like the Tommy Yasu thing. Any, an experienced player would probably have stayed down, held his head in his hands, like, Rolled Everyone over. across there. <laughs> Everyone across there, you know, going for Godfrey. You know, you, mm -hmm. you, you, you could just see it. Back mm -hmm. in the day, it would have been, you know, you've stamped on our guy's face. Yep. They would have gone for Godfrey. The crowd would have got up. The referee would have had to get involved. And, you know, Tommy Arsenal would have been it? down on the floor. That, that is the, the gamesmanship. That's the smart play of back in the day. But we are just so nice. Yeah. And, it's that also and, match management too. It's it's because it's it's Obama Yang, right? It's your well he wasn't there, but but, but like it's your players on the pitch. Well, like it's also the, the manager. What is the manager saying at halftime after that happens? I mean, granted, we were up one. Well, uh, look, one I don't know the what time, the manager said because I'm not. We in don't the dressing know, room. of course. But, but what I'm saying is, yeah, forget the manager. <laughs> I keep saying when you cross that white line, it's us against them. You're on enemy territory at Goodison Park. And it's they war. want to they want to bury us, so we have to go to war. Well, look, it wasn't four one. And this is it. This is it. It's naivety, right? We we, we have that, young yeah. players who are mature, but there's a collective naivety. And you know, Aaron Ramsdale can't. You did you you saw him when it went to one one, and and they kept pressing, and he's bellowing at everyone, bellowing at everyone. You need that in the middle of the park. You need that across various areas of the pitch. Kev, Kev says that to us all the time he's about the spine. spine. And he's a, tr you he's a true leader. Spine. This is you why do. Kev says goalkeepers as captains, they could say all they want back there, but when That's you need a, problem, a master though. and commander, it's got to be... Yeah. In the, in the, yep, in yep. the trenches. Yep, in the trenches. Do, let's switch it. let's switch gears a little bit brilliant stuff on pepe um i think we've all wanted it to work we've all been behind wow. him we've all rooted for him and there's no doubt that he's a super talent and i don't blame him for his price tag i think raul that's has a lot fault. that's yeah. a lot to do with the um previous uh regime and what they were willing to to do in order to get him and and of course as we know the pr then previous manager wanted zaha at the club and we ended up with Pepe, and there's a lot of reasons for that too. Yes. Yeah. MK, who's next on your list in terms of um, the Arsenal bench, who sits, who starts, who's subbing? So it, this is actually not someone who's even on our bench, but I would definitely rate above Inketia, and I'm honestly shocked why he's not even really discussed anymore, and that's Balogun. And I know that he was kind of thrown into the deep end in our first match of the season. And, and ever since, he's kind of been in the under 23s. He recently said in the press, and I, I'm paraphrasing this because I didn't get to pull up this quote, but he was implying that this is not enough of a challenge for him. This is too easy for him. Mm. And, you know, if you want him to develop for you, and he seems to be ready, you need to give him game time in the Premier League or loan him. And if, because if you can't give him the minutes, because he is still what, 19, I believe, 18, 19, um, then you need to be able to loan him. And I'm just kind of scratching my head why Inketia, who we had an option to sell, by the way, over the summer, but then we said that the price tag was too low. And now we're going to see again another Arsenal player wind down their contract and probably leave. So what do you do with Balogun? You know, maybe in January, right, he goes on a loan. But what do you do until then? I mean, at this point, like, 
would you start him over in Katia? Would you put him on that bench over in Katia? I guess that's my question. No, I've, I've said it all along. Balogun needs to learn his trade. Hmm. Under 23's football is too easy for him. We've seen, yep. obviously, under first game of the season, which is no fault of his, by the way. Okay. It was obviously COVID and all that kind of thing. He got chucked in. Yep. So it was a good sample size for us to see how we done. He moves well. We know he's quick, etc. But it's the experience of know-how. How to move against a, 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 a premiership defender is totally different to under 23s. I would have loaned him out at the start of the season. That's when I would have loaned him out. Agreed. Looking then to maybe bring him back in January if he'd done well. But obviously you keep monitoring him. So all this, all this time in the 23s for me is a waste. Agreed. He ripped the 23s up last season. We know he's, he's good at that level. Kev, what would you say to some of the squaddies in chat who are talking about there are, there are younger players in, and maybe the Premier League is different, you know, we've seen kind of come to the fore. Um, you got Mason Greenwood and you've got some other younger players. And then also, of course, you know, whether it's Syria, Bundesliga, La Liga, you see younger players. Eddie Nketi has been on loan. He's he's come back into the squad. He's been given chances, but hasn't really taken them at the top level. I, I think I agree with MK. We've talked about it before, how Balogun and maybe Martinelli, very unfair to judge them on the Brentford game when you didn't have the entire first well, team squad yeah. around them, Kev. Yeah, yeah. What do we lose at this point when we're not scoring to maybe say, give him a chance against Southampton until maybe there's a loan deal for him in January what would you what, what what would you say to that? I'm not saying start him, but maybe if there's 20 minutes to go and we need a goal or 25 minutes, are you? So does he come you, on? Uh, does he come on ahead of sub. Pepe and, and Aubameyang? Well, I, I'm, well, that's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm asking. Well, if Aubameyang starts, no, no, but that's starts, what you're saying. No, but no, hold on. But with uh, well, I can only go with what was picked the last game. Okay. So you go with the last squad. Fair, <clears throat> fair, fair. Aubameyang's on the bench, Pepe's on the bench, Eddie's on the bench. If Balogun's going to come on the bench, who drops out? And does Balogun, as you say, with 20 minutes to go, does Balogun come on ahead of Aubameyang and Pepe? You might say, yes, he does. And if you do, fair enough. But I just think he doesn't have the experience. That's all. So how do we get him ready? By getting him a cup experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think personally that I would certainly start him over in Ketia. Whomever said that Ketia is a championship player, that's exactly what I was going to say. Someone said it in chat. That's his level. And I think that that's what we've seen as his level. Um, I think, you know, Pepe, I feel like he plays better out wide. Um, so if I'm thinking of just like purely on a, like a, a sort more of a central forward, I do think there is potentially room at least to put Balogun on the bench. And if Oba has really been this shocking, um, I'm not saying that Balogun should start over Aubameyang, but maybe there is some game that you could maybe give him like 10 minutes. You know what I mean? Like even if you started Aubameyang. I think this is the game. I think that, Southampton yeah. MK is, is, Why is not the give game. Why not 10 and, minutes or 20 Kev, minutes? Kev, I'm not saying, I'm not saying <clears throat> like, I, I feel not regularly. That, yeah, I feel like, with Martin, with, we're going to get to Martinelli, but I think that Oba will start against Southampton. That's my hunch that he'll come back into the team. But if there is a situation where we're looking for a goal and all of those players have been given a chance and they haven't gotten a goal, and you're in that squad, Kev, are you saying to yourself, screw it, give him a chance, give him 20 minutes, let bring him on before, would you bring him on before Pepe, for example? Balogun, considering all that we've discuss, discussed about Pepe. Uh, no, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't because we, we, we know what Pepe can do. We know Pepe's got experience. He's got talent. We know Balogun's a young, up-and-coming striker who is talented as well. But he's, I could tell you this much. Right now, the most talented one is Pepe, who's not getting a game. Is his attitude right? If his attitude ain't right, 
myself, and this is what I would say. If Pepe's attitude ain't right, he ain't coming on the pitch. So okay, if, can I, if so if Balogun is on right. so so if <laughs> Balogun is on the bench, you lose nothing for bringing him on. Do you understand what I mean? Because Pepe's yeah. attitude determines whether he is involved or not. That, you know, that's how I judge players. I judge players. When things are going well, it's easy. But when things are not going well, that's when you find out the character and who that player is. Does he roll mm -hmm. his sleeves up? Does he roll his sleeves up and say, Pepe should be saying, oh, sure. Hold on a minute. These youngsters are playing ahead of me and I've got the most talent. I'll show these. That's what I would be doing. And that's the attitude I'm sure Mikel Arteta wants. I hear you. So let me ask you this before we move on to the next player then, guys, is when, when I see, I can't remember his name, you guys can maybe help me, the, the kid that was brought on into the midfield. Do you think uh, when we were playing Liverpool, um, the young hotshot midfielder at Liverpool that Jurgen Klopp brought on, at, at, you know, with 15 minutes to go in that game, is he only getting a chance, Kev, because they're like 4-0 up or 3-0 up and he's been given a, a run out? Versus Sophie, let, let me just tell you this. Could you remember Arsenal with the Invincibles, and mm -hmm. all the young young players could come in once in a blue moon and get a get a start with the with the big star Stephen Hughes could come in, and all these players could mm -hmm. come in and get games. Why do you reckon you could do? It? Because you're stronger than the opposition. You're so much stronger than the opposition. So it's easier to blood youngsters when you've got a top team. It's so much easier. Because yeah. for what they don't know, the team could make up positionally, intelligence. They could make up for it. But when you're a team who is struggling yourself, <laughs> getting a young player on is only going to make life more difficult for you. Yeah, it was probably a naive question, but I ask it no, because... No, it wasn't a naive question, you know, myself, I'm telling you. It was a good question because you know what? A lot of people don't realise that it's a lot easier to blood youngsters when you're doing well. Mm -hmm. So much easier because it's seamless. They come in, they understand, they don't understand the whole thing, but the little bit that they do, you've got experienced players around who will tell them, yeah, but yeah, Tony, for instance, Ian Selly could come in there. Yeah. And he got control from behind. Tony Adams, Steve Bolt used to control him. Sells, move right, stay left, go up, go and press it. You know, they could talk, talk him through the game. Make life so much easier. I mean, to be honest, that's how Sesk was in, inducted, wasn't it? Exactly. Around all those players. All that talent. He's talented himself. And mm -hmm. they elevate your play. game. Yeah, go yeah. on. Play. Elevates everyone's yeah. game. Exactly. Vieira there. You know, get the ball past it to say, go on, do your stuff. Because if the ball pops out, you know he's going to be crashing the ball. It's Patrick Vieira. Yeah, and he's going to stick you know up I mean? for it's, you too. Exactly. You know, you got he's Vieira, where you got Perez, you got Burkamp, you got all these All these enforcers. Players, yeah. And you got a top defence. It's easy. Yeah. Put the 17-year-old really, in. That's really that's what bad. we've missed in this Arsenal team for a long time. And yeah. Kev, you've said it. And a lot of people that come on this show have said it. Senior players, that experience to dovetail all of that. Right, MK, who is next on the bench for you? So Martinelli obviously is, I would still say, more of a, a bench player. But I wanted to talk about him more and putting aside his potential hamstring injury. Who is he displacing and who displaces him? Like, mm. where is he in the pecking order? You know, obviously we have... That's a good that one midfield for and wingers, right? Like there's a lot of competition for these places because I think we can all agree that Martinelli is probably better out in the wings than he is as a central forward. Mm -hmm. But is it possible that in lieu of our striker problems right now to develop him as a central forward and could he potentially fit there? And so there's sort of two questions. Who does he displace and who displaces him in his more traditional position? And can you move him to a central forward? Well, Would it work? Well, he wasn't displacing anybody when we were winning. Fair. Well, was he? So he's probably he's probably 12th, 12th or 13th man. Okay. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if there's an injury, uh, ESR ain't playing or somebody's drops out, then there might be a place for him. That's why I say he's like 
12th or 13th because at times mm. Odegaard weren't in the team and he was on the bench and he came on, etc. So he's probably 12th or 13th, man. The, the, the issue, you cannot... Di it's difficult to develop a young striker who's a winger into a centre forward right. during the season. It's yep. very difficult to do that. So you, you need specialists. Even our own captain can't do it himself at the moment. That's how, that's how difficult that position is because it's the only position where you play with your back to goal on the pitch. And it is a hard position because you get the buffer in, you get hits. And, you know, I don't want to even want to go too much into, into his, his health. But the fact of the matter is, if he's broken down a little bit again, that mm -hmm. doesn't bode well. It's concerning. Because, yeah, it's concerning because... It really you is. Know, you, you know, you take your time and he comes on and he, he does really well. And an injury. And we've seen it last season. He's done really well and then an injury. He comes back. He has a scare. Then he comes back and does pretty well towards the end of the season. So, again, it's something... Remember, he's a young player. He's not used to the rough tumble and buffeting. He had a great start to his Arsenal career. He's had ser some serious injuries since. And now, it, what we really want to do is try and just keep him ticking over. But we're... We're so poor going forward that we have to throw him in all the time, if yeah. we can. Mm -hmm. Really, he should be a luxury that we can play sometimes and, and, and keep on the bench sometimes because Abamian and Lacazette are holding the four up there. <laughs> you know, Smith Rowe or Pepe and Saka and these ones, they should be the ones who are doing it because it's easier in those positions. And if ESR's out, Martinelli can come in but our front boys are doing the business. Now there's more pressure on a Martinelli. Scored a great goal, didn't he, True. against Newcastle? Great goal. But the fact that Aubameyang ain't doing it puts even more pressure on this young man. And it's not fair right. on him. No, it's not. And and you can see him, you know, he has an incredible work ethic, by the way. I really want to point that out. Like, he is a player that, unlike Pepe, you see him tracking back defense. You see him harassing players on the wing. And so you're a little bit more forgiving when he maybe has like that errant cross in the yeah. game against Everton because you see his consistent work ethic. You see him talking and communicating to his, his players. And I love seeing that because I think that when you see the rest of the team, not all of them, but like some players just kind of becoming apathetic and sort of just letting the game get away from them. And um, <clears throat> so I think, you know, that's where the bench can be really important. And I don't want to place this all on Mikel Arteta. But there is a bit of match management here, right? Like if you're the manager, how do you address some of this this apathy and point out someone like Martinelli? Like, like where do you draw the line? How do you manage these players in terms of their their work rate? Because that that's clearly an issue. And while you can absolutely rightfully blame the players for their performance, isn't it also the manager that needs to make an example out of someone like Martinelli? And when Oba is behaving as shocking as he is, you know, if you're talking about attitude. <clears throat> You know, why Why isn't there maybe discipline? Is it because we maybe lack the depth that some other teams do? Well, like, there was. He was dropped. Right. Mm -hmm. That's true. That, so, that is fair. Remember, there's only there's only so much a manager can do. He still has to pick the team. And the fact of the matter is, where Martinelli, uh, was it a couple of weeks ago, Sophie, we had, a, we had a podcast and we were saying about Martinelli getting his chance. Why won't he get a chance? And we say, I'm saying... He, when his chance comes, he's got to take it. He took it Correct. against Newcastle. He did. And next minute, he's in the team, which is yeah. a, what we wanted, what everybody what wanted. Great. Mm -hmm. Aubameyang hasn't been doing it. He gets dropped. That's yeah. what you want from your manager. But, but the, it's, it's more... But, but But the bottom line of it is this. When you pick that team, you pick them to be... You tell them what you want. You tell them mm -hmm. the, the game plan... They know what to do. These are these are these are top players. So mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is that they don't do how how do you work this one out? If they can do it in one game but not do it in another game, yet the message is the same, it's down to the player. The buck stops with the manager 100 percent But if you get told to do the same thing, keep doing the same thing. 
But yet, one game you do it and the next game you don't. Who is that down to? The manager has to look at it. Okay, maybe, maybe I might have to change it. And Saturday's team is going to be interesting. Really it is. Yeah. It is. For me. Absolutely. Because that, that at Everton was unacceptable. But but where where does this match matter? Because I know this was talked about, especially over the weekend. Why is it? I mean, because this is the question I have when I look at Arteta. You know, he has a plan A. And this is also, it comes down to experience as well. Speaking of experience, this show is about experience, right? This episode is about that. Why is it that Arteta is, you know, and I guess maybe because he's only been doing this a few years full time, that he's has some difficulty, I think, switching, pivoting on the fly when when things don't go to plan. Is why I absolutely agree the apathy of the players is a problem. How much of that is maybe the instructions not pivoting accordingly? Like I just I guess my question is I, I don't what, understand what's the what problem you mean about match- pivoting because here's here's what I saw letting the game the go ev- away from you. Well here's what I saw in the Everton game. Here's what I saw in the Everton game. Tierney you were came there. off Tavares come on. Why? Because you needed more energy down that left hand side and the underlapping <laughs> was the key. Picking the ball up and going inside, which is what Tavares does really well. People much maligned Eddie and Ketia comes on. Eddie and Ketia for me done okay. He had a guilt edge right. chance as well. Arsenal we score hit. that. Arsenal score that. We win the game 2 1. I don't even think we're having this conversation. So when you talk about tactical changes and, and pivoting, it only works if it works. Like if Andre Gomez coming on for Townsend, yeah, that worked. It, it, no, but that worked because Gray got the winner. If Gray doesn't right. get the winner, it's a point. They're not happy. We're not happy. So, so where is thing, because, where are things breaking apart then? Why isn't because, why isn't because it the team the team isn't playing well? Mm-hmm. That's down to the players on the pitch. The people who get picked to perform, you have to perform. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I, under, I understand those those. Okay, Eddie hitting the post isn't Arteta's fault. Over missing the sitter not. isn't Arteta's fault. I think we all agree on that. I think it, I think in the second half he just kind of got out coached a little bit. Um, and so, so no, I don't think he did. And let me tell you why I don't think he did. Because go on, legend. People mention about MK mentioned about pivoting and making a change. And when he made the change, the two changes, all of a sudden, we started to look livelier. We get that great opportunity to go back in front. That's because of the changes. Mm -hmm. Okay? But the fact of the matter is, this game is about results. We lost the game. We lost the game. And yet, remember, Everton are at home. They're going to have some of the game. They're going to have some of the game. And let's be honest, there's nothing anybody could do about that winning goal. Nobody could stop that. Nobody. Right, but how do you motivate these players? Like, where's the consequence for apathy is what MK, I'm asking. I think that's MK, the manager. MK, yeah. MK, yeah. time out. If, again, <laughs> if you have to be motivated to play for the Arsenal, you shouldn't be there. Yeah, I don't disagree with that, with that okay. but we're, we're, no, but we're stuck But you're saying about motivation. Baggage. You're playing Everton away. The consequences. I know no, that. But, but, what, but the, yeah. the consequences are, or should be, what we see this weekend. Because if you don't produce, and, 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 and by the way, there's an elephant in the room that we haven't really touched on. Where Granite mm-hmm. Xhaka came from, from way out to there, to come <laughs> back. That's what I brought up. Do you know what <laughs> I mean? Maybe, sorry, maybe, yeah, yeah. sorry, maybe that would have been the next one. Where that came from, I never yes. saw that coming. I heard the rumor, but I was like, no chance. Maybe on the bench. That was a bad decision. Of course course it is as far as I'm concerned, but he puts him in there because he thinks we're lacking the experience. That's why he puts him in there. Well, I think there's other reasons too. I think Xhaka is probably slightly, you know, better as a holding midfielder than we've seen Partey recently. I I think that we lack that (laughs) physical presence. Uh, recently that 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 strong base 
See, so, I, I think but MK and Kev. I mean, it's, no, I, 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 you know, I think we need. Part. Yeah. I think we need to stop asking the consistent question of who's going to party partner Thomas party, because he hasn't question. warranted that. Not no, this season. Hasn't. So it's like Sambi was the fall guy. So it's like Sambi's fault that party can't play his box to box game. Like really? So you bring in Jacka, who's not played or kicked the ball since September twenty fifth. I mean, Sambi didn't deserve to be dropped. You know, did Nuno deserve to be dropped? Not okay. He's made a couple of mistakes, but he's he never hides. Sambi never hides. No. Tommy Yasu never hides. Gabriel never hides. Mm -hmm. The senior players, Oba, Thomas Party, even Lacazette, who I love, they, they haven't hide. Been doing it. They haven't been doing yeah. it. <clears throat> and and, and so, let's be honest, Solf and MK. Let's be honest. Yeah. If your experienced players are not doing it, you're going to struggle. You're going to so what struggle. has to be done? So how do you how do you, how does a manager sit down with someone like Aubameyang and try to get into his head and, and work with him? Like what <laughs> well, what I has to be done this, off the pitch? Well, what has been done? What has to be done is being done. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is they're going through a terrible time, right. and you know what? Sometimes it's just time. Time. They find a bit of form and the team get back and then they they move on and we got to do it quick. We've got to do it quick. Kev, when you went through bad phases, real quick, because MK, I've got one more for you who I think was on your list um, before we mm -hmm. duck out. If you're, um, there's uh, over 300 of you in live chat right now, hit that like button uh, for us. Uh, I'm going to, come on. Uh, yep, yeah, hit it. Kev yep. needs at least half of what's in chat and minimum. you know how to do it. That's it. That's the minimum. Hit Look, it, Vinny. Like, do what Vinny's doing. Go on, just there hit you it. go. Yeah. Um, I, Sorry, what well, I've lost my train of thought real quick. Don't you hate it when, when that when happens? Kev was, when Kev was going through oh, something. Like so, Kev, kind of, when yeah. you... Thank you, MK. She's yeah, been no a problem. brilliant host tonight. Uh, <laughs> Kev, when you were going through a hard time, when you went through Baron Spill, did, did, did you just bring yourself out of the funk or did you have your manager sit with you or one of the coaching staff sit with you? How did that work out, Kev? What can the manager tell me to get me out of the funk? Can't tell me anything. It's, it's, it's all on me, so I'm the player. Manager can't tell me anything. I go on the training pitch, and like I say, I'm the one who's got to roll up my sleeves. I'm the one who's got to do the extra work. I have to. Not them. Me. So, mm -hmm. I, I, you guys give managers too much power. Trust me. It's the, it's the players that has to be taken accountability, because you know what? Managers don't cross that white line. Aubameyang missed another chance. It's not the, the manager don't miss that. Eddie and Ketcher missed the chance. It's not the manager who misses that. It's the players who have to... The, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Players make managers big time. Big, big time. And if you're lacking in your senior players in a young, a youngest team in the Premier League, mm -hmm. that's why we go up and then we take a, a correction. We go up and then we take a correction. And that's what we're, we're having to eat a little bit of humble pie right now. But the key is, if they're strong around the training ground, the likes of Oba, Lacazette, Partey and all those boys are putting the work in on the training pitch. That's the only way you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna move through it. That's the only place. All right. So, MK, um, who else did you have on your list? Because there is one, there's, a, there's one player Ainsley and then a defensive question. Thank you. Okay, Ainsley brilliant. Go on. Niles. You know, it's a bit, yeah. Right. Yep. So where does man of the man of the match at Watford? Go on. I, I I'm kind of surprised why he's been sort of dropped again. I mean, especially since Partey has been having you know some shockers lately. I mean, what's the risk in just trying to see how you know a Laconga, AM, you know Ainsley might pairing might work, or you know especially since we're going to have the um, Afcon coming up and you're going to lose Partey. Um, why not see how things work now? Should he maybe get a look in Southampton, uh, against Southampton? And real quick before you answer, Kev, I want to jump in to add this mm -hmm. into your train of thought when you answer, is for me, I would have played Maitland-Niles over Xhaka um, against Everton. This question, Everton. by Go the on. way, is what I was going to say really quickly before you get to that, one love AFC. I was thinking that if Kev was saying that. I think that, Kev, you guys are made of, you know, tougher stuff. Steel, and, yep. yeah. Yeah. Not yeah, saying but, that's an excuse, no excuse, but yeah, I do but yeah, that. but yeah, but it's the, the 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 vein of it still runs true. Sure. It is the player that has to, 
If he's in a funk, the player has to go on the training pitch and do the right things. He's got you money for therapy, your, right? You, yeah, you, Aubameyang has to work on his techniques. You know, that's the key. You're a striker. You've got to keep feeling confident hitting the back of the net. Hitting the back of the net. Just get that feeling back because you know you've missed some easy chances. So how do you put it right? You put it right by putting the ball in the net on the training pitch. That's how you do it. So I understand sure. it's a little bit different and back in the day it was a certain manager. way. But mm -hmm. but players are, are st players are still players at the end of the day. You know, they 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 go home, they think about it, and you know, mm -hmm. their attitude should be roll your sleeves up and get to work. Now, with Maitland Niles, I don't know what Maitland Niles has done. I thought Maitland Niles was brilliant against Watford. Yeah. I have no idea why he's not been involved. I would have played him, especially against Everton, somebody fit, somebody who can tackle, somebody who could get about the pitch. I would have played him with, mm. with Partey against Everton because you know that's what Everton's going to bank on. They're going to bank on their physicality. The core in the midfield, you know he's a monster. He can get up and down all day. So that's what you got to bank on. You bank on somebody like maitland Niles. But I don't know why. I've no idea. So you know, I can't answer things that I don't know. I again, I expected him to be involved because of his performances, his performance against Watford. But we've not and seen him since. Right, and his attitude yeah, seems to have really improved this season. Right. He's knuckled down. You know, the, yeah. the two of them seem to have be on the same page and stuff. He played well when he's come in so far this season, and um, he wasn't even in the squad. For, he Is wasn't even experience? on the bench. I, I mean, Is we, it we this don't know. Bias? Has he got a, a, a slight injury? I don't know. I, I can't say I know. You know, I can't say I know. I don't. But it seems a bit crazy to me that he's not even in the squad. Right. And then, like I said earlier, Aaron's kind of reiterating it. Play, you play Absolutely. well, you get benched. That's the tricky that's part. part. Of our inconsist that's part of our inconsistency is that, I mean, I get it. We don't have a lot of games to give players minutes, right? Like that has been the conundrum this season is that you mm -hmm. have a lot of talented up-and-comers and people that we've already spent a lot of money on, and you can't give them all minutes, right? You can't – not everyone can be in the starting eleven. But certainly, you know, AMN is like one of those, Ainsley is one of those players that it's just like, I feel out of all of those that we've mentioned this evening, bar maybe Martinelli, who's at least been given some more minutes of late, it's just a real head scratcher for me as to why he's, especially with the way Partey has been playing. Yeah. Especially since Xhaka is not 100% match fit. I don't understand yeah. it. You know, MK, how he comes from where he did and goes straight into the team. It's unbelievable. Shocking. It's, it's absolutely, unbelievable. So what did they do? So Injecting cortisone? You know, I, I so don't listen know, to but what you know kept what? saying, you guys. You guys always say he's Arteta's lawyer, but listen yeah, to what he's you know saying what? here. I, I don't know where that happens. I don't know how that happens. And I don't know why it happens. I have no um, idea why this... That, that is not... It's madness to me. It is madness to me. Yeah, it that was madness. great. And he, and he played the whole game? Is it experience hey, bias? Is that what it is? Maybe, maybe it is about the experience, but he never told. Because in the end, we ended up losing the game. And at the end of the day, that's what matters. It's the result. If Arsenal win that game 2-1, we didn't play well, but we won 2-1, we move on. The fact that we lost and we didn't play well, and then now we start to look at all these decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I mean, did he play better than Party? I don't know. Mr. Bungle wants us to go for another hour. Unfortunately, we can't do that. Yeah. Uh, Future Shock <laughs> says, I'm sure that I could go for a few more hours, definitely. There are a few people that are talking about Sambi plays well, gets benched. Xhaka just comes right back into the team. We called it on this show. We did. I mean, we had guests who called it on this show. Uh, Jess yeah, called we it on this show it. too. MK, he me, you, Jess, right and uh, the Lucy. He will yes. walk right into the lineup when he's Ex alleged Exactly, yep. exactly. I've got one more um, for you guys. Uh, MK, I don't know if you had this one or if you had any more, but I wanted to squeeze this in just because I'm curious what Kev's going to say and what you think too. Um, ben White's had a couple of bad games in a row. If we're going to go on what Arteta's trend is, Kev, this is what worries me about the defence. Do you bench Ben White and bring in... No. Okay. No chance. No chance. Nah, what's the backup? No we don't chance. have like Sally Buzz. No chance. Blown. No <laughs> chance. Look, we, we didn't play well the other night, but I didn't think Ben White was, was terrible. 
not to be I didn't benched. Think it was, I didn't think it was terrible, no. But again, like, <laughs> come on. Yellow card for the Nadaldi. Are you serious? Come on. Yellow no card. Bench Kevin. No way. Never. <laughs> well, hold on. What am I being benched for? That's what I'm asking. <laughs> Nadaldi goes into the book. Wow, your first booking all season. Well done. Um, MK, did you have anyone else on the bench? I think you've got the key people down. But is there anyone curious? I, I think just in lieu of timing, that's really who I mainly focused mm -hmm. on. But you know, you know, obviously there's El Nenny, right? Like, the, I mean, there's just the, you could have a whole show just on our central defensive midfield right now, and like what needs to be done there. You know, whether Partey is like you were saying. I think that's a really good question, maybe for another show. Is is Partey who we need to be building around in that central defensive midfield? Is he really a holding midfielder, as Owen mentioned when I was last on with you? Um, these are questions that are going to have to be answered. I think that currently central defensive midfield and the striker position are our biggest weaknesses. And um, for me, mm -hmm. you know, like El Nenny is obviously on his way out too. And he obviously will be with Af in, in AFCON, probably not as deep as some other players of Egypt, but we never know, Mosala. But it's just. But also, that midfield is probably going to be Xhaka and Sambi, isn't it, Kev? Once Partey goes to AFCON. Potentially, yeah, potentially. Yeah. Or, or, or Maitland Niles. Niles. Yeah. Hopefully Maitland Niles mix, gets a chance. In the mix. It's a look. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I've said it before and we've, we've discussed it many times. I'm sure you think the same, um, MK. We, we need another couple of midfielders. Yeah, we do. Big time, yeah. we do. Mm -hmm. It's... Uh... It is. It's crazy. Um, Newman says put MK in the first team. Uh, brilliant, I break a stuff leg. From, brilliant stuff from <laughs> MK tonight, Casey. Lovely stuff. I love Thank you for having me. Good Great conversation idea. as always. Yeah. You know what? We love these new conversations. Kev and I were relieved to not talk about the Everton game tonight. Trust us. But we did. <laughs> it's good to move on. But we did. Just a little but bit. We did. But we did Within a the context. Boy <laughs> Pacquiao. Boy yeah. Pacquiao. The very little man. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. Una Pacquiao. Yep, totally. Oh. Um, MK, let everyone know where they can find you. Yeah, um, you can find me at MK Leapin. I'm not sure if my little thing is on there. Let me see. I'll uh, take it here, right here. There you yeah, go. There MK Leapin. Yeah, right there. You could follow me in my personal account um, where I also tweet a lot about F1 and some other things too. And then of course, if you'd like to follow our branch or meet us for a match, if you're ever here in Los Angeles, it's at Arsenal underscore LA on Twitter and also Instagram. We're pretty active there too. Brilliant stuff. And um, if you're listening on replay, I hope you enjoy the show. The live chat, squaddies, brilliant stuff. Great comments and questions what's, from you. What's going you. on here? What's going on? Um, so... You've Newman and Virginia are in a bit of a, you know, I mean, you know, I think, I just think they may, might MK need to get a room. MK knows nothing, do you know? I know <laughs> what, nothing. What? Come on. What are you really? talking about? Yeah. I mean, That's you know, this is what happens. That's a troll. <laughs> Where's I've, got, Pablo I've got Troll plenty of them. Like? MK, I've got plenty yeah, of them. You, yeah, you've got the lion's share. It's only a matter it. of time I before it, I had though. one. I love it. I love Do they it, get yes. a yellow card? MK knows nothing. DNO, yellow card. I'm handing them out left, right, and center tonight. There's going to sure. be a brawl a la at, a, at the uh, Atletico Madrid game um, last night. Mr. Waffle, I think it's Sir Lewis Hamilton's eighth, to be quite honest. He's got D the FIA on his side, and he's got the more competitive car in the straights. <laughs> Abu Dhabi favors the Mercedes. I am a Max fan, but um, you know, I won't say that Lewis didn't deserve it, and it's going to be insufferable, and I'm going to throw my remote across the room. But... <laughs> It's going to be Lewis Hamilton's eighth, but Max will be back. Max will be back. <laughs> He's going to have a lot of years ahead of him to win it. He's got on his side, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he definitely. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Um, Jack Wilshire, uh, MK, they want you to talk about Jack Wilshire. Well, you know, we've had Jack on the show, but if there's anything you'd like to hear us talk about, MK is going to be back. She's going to be doing different styles of player profiles for us too. Um, but I love the idea of this, um, this idea of, uh, of the bench players and stuff like that. Brilliant stuff. And Wayne, you are right. Kevin Campbell is a legend. Is we are going to be back tomorrow night with a tactical squad with a twist. Super Kev. Do you Can't have another wait comment? For that tomorrow. Can't wait mm -hmm. for that tomorrow, but I just want everybody to know. But Barcelona may be not going into the knockout stage wow. of the they're Champions gonna League. They're going to the Europa, Kev. To the Europa. Wow. Because they're losing 2-0 to Bayern Munich and Benfica are winning. 
So that means that's incredible. They don't qualify. Um, Rich, thank you so much for your lovely comments. Yusuf, I don't want anyone to be upset. What was your question before we go? Can it wait till tomorrow? If you post it, repost it in the chat real quick and I'll ask Kev. Um, I will definitely, uh, oh my gosh, Universal Greek. Sorry, guys, F1 is not no, a sport. That's, it's absolutely a sport. You have to withstand 5G <laughs> on your neck for 50 laps. Do you understand the fitness these guys have yes, to be in? Yes, Cliff, 100% Cliff. <laughs> about um, condolences to Ian Wright uh, losing yes. his mum. Right, that as well. Um, yeah, very, yeah, very, very sad. sad time. I did reach definitely. out on behalf of the hybrid squad. So, so. Yeah, um, definitely. Thank you, Kev. And we've all sent our messages and we spoke about him a little bit earlier this yeah. week. Um, oh, come on. Oh, come on, Kev. Oh, Kev. That's a sideways I'll tell you compliment. what. Oh, no. That's a sideways compliment. Is, 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 he, is he speaking to the ref like that? <laughs> He's... Um, is he going to get yes, an, another yellow would mean he gets a red? Is it, is it two yellows? He's, he wants it, I think. He's got to get it. He's got to get it. Newman's got to get it. Newman's got to get it. <laughs> He's been sent off, yeah. He's been fresh. <laughs> off. Newman is off. Send your off new image head. and your appeal, Newman. I can't wait to see it. The advisory board will take it into consideration. Thank you very much. And this is what happens, MK. I try to close the show and then they come at me with all this stuff because they love Kevin. I brought up remember? that one too, and now they're all saying how it's <laughs> not it's a sport. So <laughs> it's, uh, well, Has he asked the question yet? You see. Has he asked the question? <laughs> and let's see if he's got it. Um, Casey, uh, Universal Greek, wants to go back to Benfica with you. Wow. Uh, let's Great see. Um, F1, you're getting a lot of that. I'm getting more Mike Dean. I think they want to get Newman. Jacka, Matty yeah. Kay says he's pushing. Maybe we will have a sin bin. He's oh fudging on the on the. Oh, uh... <laughs> oh fudge! Oh, no. <laughs> I don't see Yusuf's question. So if anyone does, let me know. But Yusuf, I promise, Kevin will answer tomorrow. your question answer tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so tomorrow night's tactical squad is going to be Josh and v James. No, no, versus versus Josh like versus. James. <laughs> it's going to be great. I can't wait. I can't wait. They're going to present their squads to Super Kev. And Kev is going to let them know what they think. And you squaddies will help Kev to decide who's the better tactician. I can't wait for that as well. Two fingers to my red. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Amazing. Kev, take us out. <laughs> squaddies, obviously, you're getting a little bit unruly with the referee. And you know what? <laughs> I don't want it abandoned. So, MK, thanks for coming on. Thanks for being brilliant. <laughs> Hostess with the most is Sophie. Keep brandishing them yellow cards and everything more needs to get sent off. <laughs> Deliver the reds. <laughs> oh, squaddies, you know we all love you. Look after yourself. Take good care, whether it's morning, evening, night, whatever you do. Count your blessings and look after yourself. Yep. At ease, yep. squaddies. At ease. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad.